Hello everyone and peace of Christ all of you. I hope my voice came in good and clear and I apologize for making you wait a little bit. Uh, we have difficulty with the internet and we just finished phone call with the company. Uh, today our topic is about the amazing, beautiful Quran, which is really amazing. Uh, one of you, he sent me a video. I'm not going to play it because, you know, those Abduls always, they, you know, complain about copyright in order to take our channel down. <clears throat> However, you can search exactly for the same title you see in uh, in my video and you will find the video of this uh, person. Uh, you know, he's a fool. Obviously, he do not know what he's talking about. And uh, this is what they told him. They told him the Quran is amazing, you know, and they give him false translation for the Quran. And uh, he made a book about it. His name is Gary Miller. And uh, he said in his video, not only the Muslims are amazed with the Quran, even non-Muslims. And today we will see how much we are amazed. And he wrote a book, obviously, <clears throat> about uh, the amazing Quran. And actually it's published for free by Muslims. Uh, this is a website here. It's called uh, Islam House. Islam House, you know. Amazing Quran. I will post the link for you. Give me a second. And obviously, he's sponsored by them. <clears throat> so, this is the book. And you see, uh, Muslims, it's not like you. We don't want people to read books. I encourage everybody to read books, including this book, which is very funny and very stupid, you know. Uh, will not even take me two seconds to prove that this book is a stupid, and the one who wrote it, he do not know what he's talking about. Uh, and he have no idea in other way. Uh, if we open the book here in the website, let us do that. <clears throat> Just after like a page or two, you will see something here, it says. Uh, the smaller thing, the smallest thing. So Mr. Gary, he noticed that the Quran speak about the smallest thing. What is that? Many centuries before uh, the uh, onset of Muhammad, prophethood, there was a well-known theory of atomism, advanced by the Greek philosopher. He and the people who came after him assumed that a metaphor, uh, 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 matter consists of a tiny, and it's a blah, 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 you know, okay. And then he says, this is in the Quran. This is exists in the Quran. Yet, interestingly enough, this information had already been documented in the Quran, Surat, chapter 34, verse number 3. And he say here, He, I, Allah, is aware of an atom's weight in the heaven and the earth and even anything smaller than that. And now he is talking about the atoms, how the Quran know about the atoms. Just to say to this idiot, if anybody know him, the word in Arabic is dharra. Dharra is an ant. It's not an atoms. So the, whoever said to you the translation, he is making fun of you. I mean, when we say stupidity is amazing, dharra is an ant. So the Quran saying anything is an ant and smaller. So now the, atom, the, the ant became an atoms. Today, in the language today, they use this, the word dharra to speak about nuclear because supposedly in the language, this is the smallest thing. But in the language, the Arabic language in Taif Muhammad, it was the ant. And specifically, a specific, a specific kind of ants. If we go to the interpretation, chapter 34, verse number 3, you can open any interpretation. And this is the official Islamic government of, of Jordan. We will see it's an ant. So, I mean, you make a book about it. So the ant became a nuclear, an atoms. Read with me. <laughs> 
It's not only an ant, the word dharra is used for a small ant which is red. Because those red ants, they were very small, very tiny. So it says here, not even a small ant or less or a greater. So, you know, we made a book, the book saying, Allah, he knew about every small thing, including even the red ant. And then suddenly this became an atoms and nuclear and in, you know, and a proton and a neutron and what the heck is that? So do you see how misleading work? When the Quran speak about something totally different, and now this guy, he discovered that. This is the amazing Quran speaking about atoms. Because why? Because he's a donkey. He did read the Muslim uh, 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 translation, which is false. Absolutely false. Do you, think, do you think the Arab at the time of Muhammad, they knew the atoms? And they knew even the word atoms? Obviously, this is a different word. And the different word, even, even in Saudi Arabia right now, you know, if we go in the Hadith, what is the word written in the Quran? It is dharrah. Here we go. This is the word dharrah. Here we go. I highlight it. Dharari is used for their children, the small ones. You can use it even for kids, the small ones. <laughs> what an idiot. And this is why, you know, we, 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 we love when those Western, they come with such a statement. Here they say to Muhammad, is it okay to kill the little ones of those who they are mushrikeen? Dharari, you see, dharra, dharra, dharari. Dharari is many of them, dharari. Hmm? What the translation saying? He also reported that when Allah Messenger was questions about the offspring, so the offspring is the little ones of the human. So dharra, dharra is used for ants. Dharari is used for a human or any, actually even for ants, but many of them. So how silly, how stupid those people are. And then we go and we make a book and we claim that the Quran is full of amazing discoveries. How long it took us to destroy the first thing in your book? Two minutes. So we continue. Honey. Okay, what, what about the honey? Another, another example of what one might expect to find in old book that teach upon the subject of health and medicine. So it's outdated remedies for cures. A various historical or a source state that the prophet gave some advice about health and hygiene. Don't remind me of the hygiene the prophet he used to take shower with dead dogs and women of blood from period. And uh, 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 the, the water have a stinky garbage and he claimed that oh, water is always pure. That is science. And then yet most of those pieces of advice are not contained in the Quran at first glance to non-Muslim this is appears to be neglected neglect, omission they cannot understand why Allah would not include such a helpful information in the Quran again this idiot is a stupid it's in the Quran so he think this is in the Hadith <laughs> he think the Quran never spoke about honey but the Prophet he spoke about honey so here it says, the prophet advice uh, uh, advice uh, appear outdated when later discover discovers occurred. People uh, might say that such information contradict contradict that what the prophet uh, uh, what the prophet had have given. Thus, since Allah would never allow any opportunity for non-Muslim to claim that the Quran uh, contradicts itself or teaching the prophet only include in the quran information and example which could stand the test of time however 
and one examination the truth realities of the Quran of the ex its existence and divine revelation is the entire blah 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 blah. Let's go. Where, where is the miracle now? And read the miracle. What is the story about the honey? I can't wait. And here he shows nothing. Let us go to the Quran just to show you how those stupid people they 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 they, they work. If you go in the Quran, according to the Quran, Allah He ordered the 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 bees to go and eat a fruit and shed honey. <coughs> So according to the smart Allah, the bees, you know, why the bees, why they have honey? Because they eat fruit, they shed honey. Read carefully. Hmm. This is chapter 16, verse number 69. Let us zoom in so people can see. Then to eat of all product produce of the earth. Okay? But in Arabic it says thamarat. Not the product produce thamarat. Thamarat is a fruit, and then from their bellies, because speaking about all the uh, the the uh, the bees, uh, a drink of verifying color will come out. So what the bees eat, they eat the fruits. What they pee, or what their what their poopoo is, is honey. And this is half a healing for man, people, my mankind. But this is exist even in the books of the Hindus, exist in the Old Testament, exist in the Bible, exist in you know. I mean, well, well, this is a discovery now. Everybody knows that honey is good, is healthy. <laughs> what he, he, you know, he discovered. You know, Allah, how Allah discovered that the honey have healing. But here, Allah, he discovered that the honey is the poopoo of the bees, and they eat fruits. If you change the translation here, this is Yusuf Ali. Let's see the front idiot. Hilali and Khan, what Hilali and Khan will say? Hmm. Here we go, see how the translation change? Eat of all the fruits, and then what? And then honey come out from your bellies. But we know that this is false. Honey does not come from the bellies. Who said so? You see, when the, when the, when the bees, they, uh, they go and they suck the nectars of the fruits or flowers, they bring nectar, they don't bring honey. And then the worker bee, she is not the one who will make the honey. She don't deliver honey. So according to the Quran, this bee, she go out, she bring back honey. This would come from her belly. But in reality, this is a false statement. For then the worker delivered to other worker who is in the hive, and those who they are in the hives, they start processing the honey, so the honey is not coming out of their belly of those who collected the nectar. So this is another stupid statement in the Quran. And then <clears throat> the story continue. Look like the stupid website. Each time we go we exit, it's closed. You have to click again to open it. Prophet Muhammad and the Quran. Okay. Uh, one assume. If one assumes that the Quran is the product of a man mind, then one would expect to reflect some of what was going on in the mind of a man who composed it. In fact, certain, etc., blah, blah, blah. Well, you know, for sure the Quran is not coming from the mind of a man. It's coming from the mind of his testicles. As an example, when Muhammad, he says, any believing woman, she want to offer herself to the Prophet so he can F her. Is that the mind of God? Is that really the mind of God? The, the, the God who created the seven heavens and seven galaxies and seven midget and seven Mickey Mouse and he is now busy about how many women he can F and then he says any believing women she like to F the prophet and this is only a privilege for the prophet? Isn't it obvious that this is a guy even Aisha, she said, I see. I see that your God, he rushed into your temptation, Muhammad. You're lost. And you, you are the one who claimed to be a prophet of Allah. So, and all of those women, obviously this man, this is the book, cannot be composed by a man. This is by God. 
God, he went to his office. He said to himself, what I will give to Muhammad today? Hmm. I will tell Muhammad today, you can if your wives, but already he's if in them. Don't you think you are too late? And then in the top of that, your slave captives, you if them, you rape them. In the top of that, who you own them by your hand, in the top of that, the daughter of your cousin from your mom's side, the daughter of your cousin from your dad's side, the daughter of your cousin from... And then, and any believing, any believing women, she offer herself, please, prophet, take me to bed. To the prophet, so the prophet, he can if her, not to marry her. Where the word marriage in, in Arabic? Yes, thank you, to F her, continue I in G. As a privilege to you only, you see, this is no way, this is a book made by a man, this is a book made by God. So this God who made a law for all the Muslims, he made different law for one guy, his name is Muhammad. He's different, what you can say about it, what you can do about it, he want to F as he watch, as he wish. And then when the women, they start coming to Muhammad, and many of them, they are old, and this is what Muhammad, not, this is not what Muhammad looking for. He made the verse after it says, hmm, you, Muhammad, can postpone the turn off whom you will of them? Like what? Between two brackets, your wives, you eat it. They are not wives. They did not marry him yet. Those are women are offering themselves and Muhammad now what he will do. He told them that the Allah, he told me any woman she can offer herself. So those women, they thought, okay, here we go. We get a free retirement. We stay with Muhammad. We will get a free retirement forever. I will be the, uh, you know, the girlfriend of the prophet. So old women, they start coming. And Muhammad, this is not what I'm looking for. So now he made another verse says, well, you know what? Allah told me I can take whatever I wish and I can refuse whatever I wish. So you may receive and you may receive whom you will. <laughs> you believe it. <laughs> so this idiot, he is saying the amazing Quran. For sure it's amazing. And do you see how amazing it is? I'm really convinced that the Quran is amazing. If there is any Muslim, by the way, would like to join us and tell us about the amazing Quran, I don't mind. I can open my Skype and I will take you for a snack. So the Prophet, uh, there is no way he wrote the Quran. So we continue. What else? We go back. <clears throat> I mean, what a joke. Scientific approach to the Quran. Oh, the scientific approach. Truly scientific approach to the Quran possible because the Quran authors something that is not offered by other religious scriptures. In a uh, particular other religion in general. Okay, what does that mean? It is what scient uh, scientists demand today. There are many people who have idea and theory. Okay, continue. What will that will take us? Let us... Uh, they go show us the science. He, he did not show us the science. Fertilize of what? Philosophization test. Okay, do philosophization test. He's going to do test now. Shall we do the test? The sun set in murky water, and the, the hail is coming from the mountain in heaven, and thunder is an angel. Okay, here he says, chapter and Nisa, verse number chapter four, verse 32. Don't they consider the Quran? Had it been from any other than Allah, they would surely have found therein uh, much uh, you know, contradictions. Well, the whole Quran is contradiction. As an example, which one Allah created first? The trees or the lamps, which mean the stars? Any Muslim can tell us? Who is a Muslim can accept my challenge? Very simple question. Let me open my Skype. Again, who is a Muslim? He can accept my challenge. Very simple challenge. 
which one Allah created first? You can check it out before you call me. The stars or the trees? Any Muslim? Very simple. <laughs> I'm not even asking you which one he created the first, like, uh, which, like in massive. Uh, I'm just giving you a simple detail. Which one Allah created first, the stars or the trees? Anyone? Any Muhammadan, he have the courage to give us the answer. And there is tons of examples about contradiction. All the book is contradictions. Any Muslim can tell us. If you don't dare to call me, I understand. Can you give us an answer in the chat? Uh, Lisa, I don't know if you are using the correct Skype. The Skype I used two weeks ago, this is different from the one. We are using the one which we used last time. Is that the same one you are posting? I hope so. This is the one we are using today. Let us post the link. All right. We will use this one for now, for, you know, for the coming maybe a few months. Do we have any Muslim? Have you ever heard of a God who do not know which one he created first? And you know, one of the most stupid thing, actually this is this logic, that if there is a book is made by other than Allah, well, you will find in it contradiction. That's me, my book is made by Allah. Because there is no contradiction in it. I mean, do you see even the stupidity and the stupid logic? Anyone can make a book has zero contradiction. What does that mean? Go read my books, find the contradiction. I must be Allah then. You know, sometimes like you wonder if his stupidity is a gift or it's a curse. This is the proof now that the book, the Quran, is made by, by God. And this God, his name is Allah. Why? Because there's no contradiction. But even that test which he put for himself, he got himself busted. Who is a Muslim? He agree that the Quran does not have contradiction, would like to join us. Life on air. Brother, if you call me and you defend the Quran, Allah will bless you. A lot of versions. I cannot even count them for you. Who is a Muhammadan would like to get a bunch of versions because of me? Can you imagine that Allah one day will say to you, you called the Christian prince and you got him busted. So I will give you women with big, big, big balloons. What do you think? What you will lose, you will win anyway. Allah is with you. I mean, come on, just face it. If Allah is God, you will win. Any Muhammadan? Anyone? You know, remember the Prophet, uh, peace be upon him. Uh, the funny, the Muslim, by the way, they don't say in Arabic, peace be upon him. I never heard of a Muslim saying that in Arabic. You say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which means Allah pray on him and salute him. Have you ever heard of a God, he salute his messenger? I mean, we are talking about God. You see, 
if you serve in the army, always you salute the one who is higher than you first. Always. So if I was a lieutenant or a captain, I see a major, I have to salute first, and then he salute back. In Islam, Allah, he saluted the prophet, and he pray on him. <laughs> and then the Muslim in the translation, they give us false translation, they say, peace be upon him, brother. <laughs> Where we can find that in Arabic? Any Muhammadan, my Skype is open. May they, may they, may they. Do we have any Muslim would like to put that into test? And this is a test. This is an examination. Allah himself, he chose him for himself. So we cannot say, oh, this is not the way really to prove the Quran to be from God or not. As you see, you Muslims are proud about it too. So what we will do now? In two seconds, we can prove that this is a false challenge and the Quran is full of contradictions. Not only one, not only two, not only three, not only four. You know, I'm not going to count for you, you count. Who want to do that? Who is a Muhammadan? Would like to do so. Anyone? And then now our Skype is empty. There is nothing. Nobody is calling. Nobody is texting. You cannot call me right away, by the way. You have to text me first. Unless you call me before, maybe. I don't know how the setting of this new Skype now. <clears throat> Any Mohammedan? So you must have you made the ant a nuclear atoms. I mean, how big the lie can be? By the way, the prophet is so good in hygiene. Isn't it the prophet, he says, if somebody eat with his hand, when you eat with his hands, lick your fingers, if you could not lick it, or ask somebody, your wife or your slave, just to lick it for you? I mean, this is hygiene. Imagine I'm eating now, and then I give you my fingers to lick it for me. Why Muslim don't do that in their TVs, programs? You see, the Muslim, they have like programs, and like now they are translating to Spanish and trying to fool the Mexican to show them that Islamic society is so good, is so clean, is so nice. I mean, just go, man, just go inside the house and see, not in the TV. Very clean. Do we have any Muhammadan? May they, may they, may they. Who is a Muhammadan when I took this examination, a challenge made by Allah, into test? Anyone? Don't give my fingers why. <laughs> they will bite them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, you know, they, they speak about hygiene, the prophet. You know, this guy, his name is Dr. Sabil Ahmad. Christian Prince, he tells me, I swear by Allah, it's not me. The guy is almost going to a poo, poo I did not call him. This is not me. You know, my voice. We know that you don't dare to call me, you coward. We thought it's you. And this guy, he was speaking to the Christians, he invited a bunch of fool, foolish Christians who come to the mosque to sponsor Islam. You know, there's many people do not know how they are supporting Islam. They think, let us go to the mosque and see what they will say. In fact, they are using you for their propaganda and their videos in YouTube. This is the Prophet said here. Ibn Abbas reported that Allah Prophet saying, when one of you eats, he must not wipe his hands till he lick it or give it to someone to lick it. <laughs> and now what they will say this is the Eve this is Sahih my friend this is authentic it's authentic as you see this is Al-Bukhari huh? 
Muhammad he claimed that when you like when you lick your fingers, you are licking the blessing of Allah. Hmm? By the way, my fingers are dirty. Let me go to the street and see if somebody walking by. Imagine you go to a, to a restaurant, fancy restaurant, all of them, they are following the prophet teaching. No spoon, no fork. Use your hands. And now everybody licking the, the, the fingers of everybody. Brother, the blessing. Thank you for the blessing from your fingers. <laughs> and not only that, the funny is, Muhammad is stuck with number three. You have to lick it three times. In different hadith, I see this one, it says da'if, but it's sahih actually. It says you have to lick it three times. As you see here, look, look at the funny Muslim you know, propaganda. In this hadith, which is exactly the same, it says the Eve is not. You go just little, 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 little. It says Sahih. The same one. Sahih. Daif. Sahih. Daif. Sahih. Daif. Sahih. Daif. Sahih. Daif. What the heck with this religion? <laughs> and Muhammad is claiming. That because you don't know where the blessing is in the food, there is something that's called a blessing. So you have to lick the blessing. This is the only religion you can lick the blessing. My friend, don't text me unless you are a Muslim. We want Muslims to call us. Why somebody is a Christian is trying to call me? Any Abdul? And don't worry, if you call me, I'm not going to make you lick my fingers. No way. And the excuse is, for he do not, does not know in what, por in what portion of the food the blessing lies. Like, what the heck? So in the food, there's a lies, there's lies like a uh, blessing. But in the dish, like, you know, you have to, we don't know where. So the blessing, like you eat, you eat, you eat, but you don't know where. <laughs> oh boy, how, how far stupidity can go? Why you don't put that in your book, the one who made a book about the amazing and the science of the Prophet of Allah? Hmm? The Prophet of Allah, after he do have sex, or he do poo poo, he dry his hands on the wall. <laughs> so I can imagine that the Prophet of Allah, he have a Picasso art in his bedroom. Each time he do poo poo or he have sex, he dry his hands on the wall. Try it. Just try it, try it. Let us see what you will have, what kind of a drone you will have in your wall. The Prophet, he have wallpaper made by his fingerprint. Hmm. Any Muslim would like to call us to talk about the contradiction in the Quran? Hmm? Let us see if we can find this hadith. <clears throat> brother, brother. <laughs> All right. Uh Somebody saying he is a Muslim, he converted to Christianity. No problem. Still, I will not take your call. We want a Muslim to call us. Not somebody converted to Christianity. We want a Muslim. Any Muslim. 
And why are you converted to Christianity? I'm upset from you now. Don't you want your fingers to be licked and get an endless private part? And you will go to heaven where the women there, they have huge balloons. Man, this is what scared the hell of me. I mean, how big they are. And the funny is, the Quran used the word kawaib. You know kawaib, you see the Kaaba? Kawaib is a cube. Uh, the Muslim translation for the verse here, you will see different translation from the, the bent from one to one. Here it says, and young full breasted, okay, young what? <laughs> Guys, we were talking about garden, have a graveyard, okay, and then a young full breasted. <laughs> You change the translator. Let us go to Yusuf Ali. Yusuf Ali, he have a word I do not know how to say. So forgive me, please. I always play with it. And you will have... Like, what is the word women in the verse? Wait, Muslims, you add in words in the Quran. What is the word women? He, this, this, is the, this is the verse here. Where is the word women? Where, where, where? Anybody can tell me. How do you know it's women? And here it says... Volo octopus. Oh, we will get an octopus. Uh, you know, women, they put their fingers around you, and that's it. They are octopus, brother. Volo botos. Volo botos. Is that botox? Now I know what women do, botox. This is century ago. 14th century ago. So women, botox, botox, women equal age. What equal age? What the heck is that? So you are promising me women who have a volo botos boobs? That's a miracle. I mean, isn't it obvious that this God must be a true God? Who is the if there is any God in the world he give you women with big boobs? Or volo octobos? Hmm? Only Allah must be a true God. And this look, there's no contradiction here. <laughs> here we go. We found we found the verse in the Quran have zero contradiction. Uh, Salah saying, Salah is a Muslim, I think. He's saying, any decent Christian follow, follower of Jesus here? Salah? Brother, why you are asking? Do you have a top secret? You want to share it only with the true follower of Jesus? Look, look, hopes. You must be working for Putin, man. Salah? Why you don't call me, buddy? You are the guy who keep posting in the comment section, right? If there's any decent follower of Jesus Christ, you could not even forget to mention his name. Do you know even do you know that your prophet do not know even what the name of Jesus? Oh, privately, <sighs> guys. Salah, he can answer you privately. Why you don't answer us without privately, brother Salah? Why, why private? Why privately? Okay, I want to talk to you in private. Can you call me, please? Salah? Me and you, we will have a private call. Nobody will know about it except YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. And and the last one to know, as usual, is Allah. So why you don't call us as long as you have answers? I mean, look how brave they are. If you are, please contact me privately. I will be happy to answer your question, but not this quack. You are talking about who? Prophet Muhammad calling him quack, shame on you. Dude, as long as you can answer any question, very simple question, why you kiss the black stone? Tell them, tell them, go ahead. Why you Muslims kiss the black stone? Give us an answer, we are waiting. Don't give me a quack answer. Walk, 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 walk. Why you kiss the black stone? Hmm? Are you pagan? Is that scientifically accurate? Hmm? 
Hey, Muslims, why you kiss the black stone? And the funny, they accuse everybody to be pagan. And they are lined up by thousands around the house made of stones, and they believe it's holy stones. And then they put their head on the stone and they cry, mm, forgive me, stone, please. Are you there? Hmm. Why do you lick or mint the Palestine one? How many times I told you, you coward? You are a Pakistani, and yet you call yourself Palestine. Go change your name. Come back, Pakistan. What's wrong with you? Are you ashamed of... I mean, look at this religion. Those people, they have nothing to do with any of... Even their God, Allah, forget to mention the word Palestine. You cannot fight in the Quran. Yet Abdul, he is from Pakistan, which is flooded, and people do not have a place to walk no more, and the, the country is bankrupt. He is worried about Palestine. But yet, if we go in the Quran, we will find that Allah, he gave Palestine to the Jews. And not only that, Allah, he told the Jews to kill the Palestinian. Where in the Quran, brother? Yes, brother. And when the Jews refused to kill the Palestinian, brother, Allah, he made them lose their direction for 40 years. See what happened when you don't kill the Palestinian, brother? Here we go. Is that your Quran? Chapter 5, verse number 21. I remember once I was doing a seminar in the Philippines, and Abdul, he was so excited. He put his hand up. He said, what do you think about the injustice done to the Palestinian by the Jews? I heard that you people here, you support the Jews. I said, uh, so we support the Jews. He said, they are Zionist. I said, okay, can you open for me chapter 5, verse number 21? The guy, he, uh, you know, he don't know how to find it. Actually, he started reading the verse number 20. I told him, Abdul, this is 20, 21 in Quran. The verses appear in different way. So 21, 21, read 21, translation. Oh, my people, enter the holy land which Allah has assigned into you. And then the Abdul, he says, yeah, this is for the, the Palestinian. I said, Abdul, go back, go back. One line, one line. It says, Remember Musa said to his people, <laughs> Your God, Allah himself, is a Zionist. And this is the Holy Land was a promise to the Jews, even in your stupid Quran. Now we go back to zero. Who is a Muslim is going to put the Quran into test. Hmm? A guy, his name is Gary. He said, look at the, look at that sentence, brother. Allah is very sure. If this book is made by other than Allah, you have a lot of contradiction. And now we have a proof that my books is made by Allah too, because I have all my books have zero contradiction. Therefore, my book is written by Allah. <laughs> But even this verse proving to us again that Allah is a fraud because the Quran is full of contradiction. Any Muhammadan? Hmm? Any Muhammadan want to put the Quran into the challenge? See, the one who put the challenge is not me, so don't be upset. It's your God. And this guy, he says, a perfect example how Islam provide man with a chance to verify it authority, I forget, I'm not going to say it, and prove it or wrong. So Islam offer you that. <laughs> so all what we need is to check if this verse work properly with the Quran. If not, then the Quran is not a valid book, is not authentic. Any Muslim? Brother, 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 if you look at the screen, if you look at my screen, the 
Do you see the stars in the screen, brother, moving? Guess what Allah is doing according to the Quran? Allah is using the stars to shoot the shaitan who is trying to steal information from Allah. Science. So Allah, he says, we, we made the sky protected roof. What the Muslim, they say, this is atmosphere. When we go in the Quran, we find that the Quran saying the opposite. This is Allah shooting the one who tried to go to the sky. Not the one is coming from the sky. I mean, what kind of a lie they can try to cover? Chapter 15, verse number 18, brother. Now we understand what is happening in the sky. So the reason we see those things in the sky coming from the sky with a flame because Allah is using the American defense system. He sued the evil shaitan who tried to steal information. Tiridim, tiridim. Tiridim, tiridim. Tiridim, tiridim. Prince and Prince, I told you, don't call me. Do you know what the time right now in Pakistan? Zach and I, first I'm not calling you. I'm calling Mimi Hijab in London. Why you answer? Good Prince, we are the Muslim, we exchange number. And we exchange whites. So I took his number, he took my number. And now I'm using his number, so I can call London for free. Uh, okay, as long as I, I thought I'm calling Mimi Hijab, it turned to be you. And now you are up anyway. So what do you think about Allah is guarding this, the sky from the evil shaitan who tried to steal information. What information shaitan is trying to steal? Christian Prince, Allah, he protect the sky from the shaitan because shaitan, he go up to the heaven and he tried to spy at Allah. Okay, but spy what? Like Allah is talking to who? I mean, can't Allah, like, it's like, is, a, is, is the sound of Allah like go through? I mean, why his voice is not uh, protected from being heard? By anyone, why would not hear it? Why Shaitan can hear it? With him, friends. First of all, Shaitan he had to go to the seven heaven, and then when he tried to go there, he tried to steal it from him, and then Allah told him, "Okay, do Shaitan, or he is able or succeed to steal some information." With him, friends. Shaitan he steal the from him, but then Allah he told him, and most likely he would die before he arrived back, and if he survived, he will be injured. Heavily injured, but still he can transfer the information which he stole from Allah. Hmm. Look like even Allah, he is not safe from hacking. So the hacker, Shaitan, he fly up to the heaven and his purpose is he want to spy at Allah. Exactly. And then Shaitan, he listen to what Allah is saying and then he want to take it so he can sell the information in the market. Exactly. And then in the market, Shaitan, he will give it to who? To the fourth teller. The fourth teller is the one who associates with Shaitan. So Shaitan provides him information. Other example, you go to the fourth teller, you say to him, what will happen to me tomorrow? Because I can tell you, what will happen to you tomorrow? You will grow your beard with fertilizer, it's still not working. We know what will happen. With them, friends, respect yourself. My beard is like this because I don't care for it. If I want to put fertilizer, it's going to be a lot nicer. And you know that. Okay, Zuzu. So now what we will do? Do you really believe that Shaitan, he can steal information from God? What kind of God this God is? I mean, shouldn't he change his security? Zuzu, are you there? Zuzu. Hey, Zuzu, come on, I know you're on sleep. Come on, don't play this game with me. Zakir Naik, there's no way you can you can snore like this. All of you is in this, and like if, if we turn the fan on, you will fly. This is a snoring of somebody in the size of an elephant. Come on, Zakir. Christian Prince. First of all, I was not snoring, and this is not me, this is my wife. Ah, okay, I was saying who is snoring next to you. No, there's no way it's you. Exactly. And for me, I'm not going to answer you, and you know it. But why you don't answer me? What kind of God? He need and how he how he can shoot shaitan who is a small according to your prophet shaitan he sleep in your nose, 
So how in the world Allah he shoot someone who can so, so small he go inside your nose and he sleep there by a star? Huh? We shoot the the the, the shaitan by a star? How big the star and how big shaitan? Zakir? So look at that, look at them. We are making a challenge to put the Quran into test. And until now, the Muslims are not calling. <clears throat> My friend, the one who is to keep texting me, he is a Christian. He converted from Islam to Christianity. I'm not going to take your call. I told you, I want a Muslim to talk to me. What I will do with you? You are a person who left Islam already. So? So, I converted to Christianity. Okay, wonderful. And then, he, he said to me, why well, you are not answering? What's wrong with you? I told you I, will, I want only Muslims to call me. Convert to Islam back, I will take you. <laughs> Any Abdul? Any Muhammadan? Would like to put the examination which our friend here mr gary he said this is a challenge from allah and allah he put his own words into test and he said if you don't find any contradiction in this book then this book for sure made by allah therefore all the books the book of trump is made by allah there's no contradiction there trump he keeps saying me, me, I'm, I am, I, I am the one who did this. I am the one who did that. No contradiction. He must be Allah too. <clears throat> hmm? My books too, made by Allah. There's no contradiction. What say you Muslims? Either this that guy Gary Gary Miller, whatever his name, is an idiot, or what he is saying is true. Already we showed you that the Quran is a really stupid book. I mean, if we go right now to the Quran, we just one verse as an example. Yeah, this the, we we just showed this one. I mean, isn't this stupid? Shaitan he want to steal information, so we showed him. So this is how Muhammad explained the foreign stars or the meteor. This is Allah shooting shaitan in his ass. And then he says, and the earth, we make it flat. Verse number 19. And then we place mountains in the top of it. Is that what science says? That the earth was flat and then somebody brings some mountains and he put it in the top of the earth? Huh? Any Muhammadan? <clears throat> Any Muhammadan? Mr. Salah saying, show your degree in Islamic Sharia, CP, unless you are a liar. My friend, I have I have thousands of people who know me for real. So if I say such a thing, I mean, many people, they will laugh at me, including my own family. So you are a stupid idiot. Secondly, uh, you know, when I got my degree in Islamic Sharia law, my dad, he said to me, you got degree in farting. Do you think I'm even proud about it? Sharia law, what is Sharia law? How to shake your penis three times? What Sharia law? I mean, the Muslim, when they say Sharia law, you think there's a law. Why you don't call me and we will see who knows the Sharia, who do not. Hmm? Show me, check me your degree. Why I'm applying to work for you? Why I want to show you? Anything else you want to see? <laughs> show me your degree. <laughs> I am like your prophet who do not know how to write, how to read. 
So how come you want me to provide you my degrees, yet you don't ask your prophet, what is your qualification, man? You do not even know how to read your name. Show I am not a liar? I don't care if you think I'm a liar or not. You have to prove it. Is that correct, guys? You have to prove that I am a liar. And I'm giving you tons of opportunity. Here we go. I'm speaking against your prophet. Everything I say, you can come now to the microphone and show people that this guy is a liar. You do not need the degree. If I'm applying for a job, I will show you my degree, but my degree will not help in any job, actually. Unless, like, you know, some jobs, like with the American Army, etc., maybe. So, CP... Show us the green Islamic Sharia, please. Can you show us? No, I cannot show you. <laughs> Why you want to see it? You are so cute. <laughs> yeah, what Sharia? Islamic Sharia. You know, when you open right now any Islamic uh, uh, channel and speak about Sharia, what is the phone calls? Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam, brother. Brother, my wife, when we were having sexual intercourse, a drop of her milk came in my mouth. She became forbidden for me, brother. <laughs> this is <shy. laughs> So now there's millions of people listening to the Abdul who was sucking the nipples of his wife when he was having sex with her. And now he is worried. What his worry is, because in Islam, brother, if we drink the milk of a woman, we became like mother for me. She's my mother now. <laughs> Another guy, he called the sheikh, he says, Assalamu alaikum, brother. Alaikum salam. Brother, my fiance and me, we ate from the same ice cream. Is she forbidden for me now? <laughs> Sharia Allah. <laughs> oh boy. You know what? As long you are an, uh, you are a person who can examine Sharia Allah, what is the point of a growing woman? She can give her boobs to a stranger. What that will do exactly? Can you tell us? Huh? What do you think? And even Aisha, she ordered her sisters and her nieces not anyone to enter upon her unless she nursed them first. <laughs> Imagine if Joe Biden, he practiced this now, his wife. Anyone want to enter upon Joe Biden? You have to nurse the sisters of Joe Biden and her nieces and her granddaughters. Mm. Especially men. Do you see it? Here we go. We are learning from you, Sharia Allah. What is the Sharia Allah? Are you Muslims or Hindus or something? Do you think that milk will make you like the cow, your mother? And according to the fatwa, in this case, that milk will not forbid the man from having sex with her anyway. I can show you right now the fatwa. Only the milk of a child, like if you, if you nurse a child, and you have to nurse for long, not like once, that is according to Sharia Allah, that a child cannot have the woman or even her children to be uh, married to. But here we have an adult. The Prophet, he ordered adult women to give their boobs to strangers. What is the law? Somebody saying, what is the jinn? Jinn, according to Muhammad, are creatures who they are they can have sex with Muslims, they can eat, and they eat bones, you know? Uh, you know, once Muhammad, he was doing poo, poo as usual, all the day. <laughs> uh, so one of, he asked his companion to bring him something to clean his ass with it, all right? So one of them, he used to give him always bones, but this time something, Muhammad, he came with something new. So he said to him, uh, don't give me bones for this is the food of the genies 
So mistakenly, some Christian, because they are ignorant about Islam, they think that genie, it is the same as saying a demon. Demon are a spirit. Genie are not. They don't even have a spirit. Genie are creatures who they eat, have sex, they have kids, they have babies, and even they sleep with a human. All right? Uh, so according to Muhammad, after you eat, uh, after you eat and you throw the bones, Allah, he put invisible meat on the bones and the genie eat it. As you see in this hadith here. So you eat the bones. You eat the, the meat and the bones. And then you have bones only, right? You throw it away. Every bone on which the name of Allah is recited is your provision. Provision of what? Of the jinn. And this is a conversation supposed to happen between Muhammad and the genie. Here it says, you can read, let me let me pause the hadith for you. I will pause the link. You can read it. It's funny, it's stupid. Showing us the science of Muhammad again. The big foot. <laughs> so the genie, they are asking Muhammad, they have any conversation. They, the jinn, ask him, the Holy Prophet, about their provision, he said, every bone on which the name of Allah is recited is your provision. The time it will fall in your hand, it would be covered with the flesh. -da 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 -da. And the dunk of the camel is fooder of your animals. So the genie, they grow goats, they have animals too, they have bits. <laughs> hmm. Do you see it? So the genies, they are not only creatures who eat and have sex and do poo poo and you know and have sex with the human, with Muslims specifically, as according to Muslims. Uh, even they have bits. So the the poo poo brother of the camel. And the human is the food of your animal. Uh, you pretended Islam and Christianity don't both believe in stupid things. Uh, science for dinner. Uh, well, I don't know. I think, you know, you are talking about science. And you are talking about stupidity. But yet your name is science for dinner. So my friend, you are the kind who eat science, who shit knowledge. <laughs> Look at your name. <laughs> science, science for dinner. So this guy, he eat science, he shed knowledge. And now he is doing his poo, -poo in the chat. <laughs> okay, why you don't give me something the Christian they believe in is stupid? Go ahead. What you obviously you are an atheist, right? And you eat science for dinner and you shed knowledge for in your bathroom. Give us one of your poopoo. -poo. Go ahead. What is the stupid thing the Christian they believe in? Go ahead. Don't play dead now. Oh, he is doing poopoo -poo now. He is doing. He's eating science for dinner. <laughs> oh. Science for dinner. What do you do for breakfast? Stupidity. Okay. What about lunch? Biden. That's deep. Uh, <laughs> I mean, where do those people come to me? I don't know. Sometimes you cannot you cannot control the sewage. Do we have any Muhammadan want to say anything? We go back to the Chinese. I mean, look at this. Until now, until now, not a zero Muslim, not a single Muslim, he dared to take the challenge into test. Either this is true, or the Quran is a book of stupidity. 
There is our money who claim even Muhammad never seen, never exist. CP, what is your take on this? My friend, Muhammad is exist or not exist. None of my business. I am here to laugh. I prefer that he exists. <laughs> who care? I mean, those things, my friend. If he exists or not. There's a there's a more than a billion a human being. They believe in his existence. So why wanna what what that mean? You know, not exist. Don't hurt the hurt their feeling. I am against hurting the feeling of anyone. So no, he exists. He exists, but he's in the grave. He's dead. So now the question is, how such an exist man, his name is Muhammad, he claimed that he sent by God. He says such a stupid thing. So I say he exists and approve his stupidity. I mean, you cannot accuse somebody of a stupidity, yet he doesn't exist. That's weird. As an example, as an example. When the prophet, he says that women, they have a sperm and there is sperming, sperm coming from their ribs. How the prophet knew that? Amazing. You know, all my life I was suspicious about women. They act weird, especially when it's come to their chest area. You know, like they cover it, they hide it, and they have a bra, and you know, like, and this bra is armed with the, like some kind of material and bra. Something's fishy there. So I said to myself, what is behind the bra? What are they hiding? And then when I did read the Quran, brother, and then I found that the backbone is where the human being, a man, a male, sperm coming from, and the women, ribs is where there is sperm coming from. I know now what are they hiding. Those bra brother, they are full of sperm. And when it is time, they flood you with it. <laughs> boing, boing, boing. This is why you see those like women when they jump, you know, like boing, boing, boing. Why? Because they have a breast testicle there. You, because you are ignorant. What is the guy science for dinner? <laughs> you, because you are ignorant, you think those are breasts, my friend. Update your information. Those are not information. Information. Okay, let's speak French now. Lou, Francais, okay. So, you know, the, they are breast testicle. And it's very easy to speak French, by the way. You say like, Lou, breast testicle, Leon. Okay. So, it's according to Prophet Muhammad. Let's, let us go to Ibn Kathir. I mean, this is the book of uh, God. What you can say about that, you know? Yeah, all right. So, uh, chapter 86, verse number 7. Let us go to Ibn Kathir. Because Muslim, they might say he's lying. It's not true. The Quran never say that. You're a liar. You're a liar. Here we go. This is the Quran. And this is Ibn Kathir, brother. And this is your website. Let us see what Ibn Kathir will say. That's deep. Are you ready? Are you sincerely ready? Hmm. Meaning the backbone of the man and the ribs of the woman, which is referring to her chest. <laughs> so it's a sex sexual fluid, meaning... He created from a water gushing forth, meaning a sexual fluid that comes out breast forth from the man and the woman. We are created from what? From a sexual fluid breasted out from the man and the woman. Put that in your mind. Take a note, take note. Thus the child produced from both of them by permission of Allah. Do to this, Allah says, proceeding from the between the backbone and the ribs. Meaning the backbone of the man and the ribs of the women, which is referring to her chest. Suhaib ibn Bashar, he said, the backbone of the man and the ribs of the women, it is the fluid yellow and fine in texture, and the child will not be born except from both of them, i.e. sexual fluid knowledge. Who can beat that? So somebody can call Mr. Gary and he can add this to his book. Absolutely ancient, Mr. Ancient Indian. This is absolutely. Actually, I heard that even Indian, they stole a lot of science from Prophet Muhammad. I can prove it. Look, let me show you how the Hindus, they stole a lot of things from Prophet Muhammad. Look in here. 
What is the biggest chapter in the Quran? Hmm? The cow. Now you, as a Hindu, you try to say, oh, there's no connection. So either the Hindu stole from Prophet Muhammad or Prophet Muhammad stole from the Hindus. And I have to say, no way Prophet stole from the Hindus. He is, he was first. You see, yes, the Prophet Muhammad, he was 1400 years, I mean, his existence. But according to Prophet, he, he according to Prophet, he says, I was a prophet and even when Adam wasn't created yet. If, 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 that's deep. Uh, guys, look look at this guy. He is teaching us about language. Sila Akar is saying, ask yourself. This is serious, brother. Sila, thank you very much for mentioning this. I mean, you shamed me now, brother. Ask yourself, if Jesus would be pleased by your language or listening to this quack. Ah, okay, you see, let us change the language. I'm going to use the language of the prophet. A man, he came to the prophet and he said to him, I did F a woman. I slept with the women, sorry. He did not say the F word. I slept with the women. I have intercourse with women. The prophet, he said, maybe you did touch her. The prophet said, no, no. He said, maybe you blink your eye with her. The prophet, he said, the guy, he said, no, no. The prophet says, maybe you effed her. And this is the F word in Arabic as it is in the front of you. Aniktuha. So you potato, we want to teach us how to speak and what language we should use. Do you see how hypocrite you are? There's a million word to use instead of saying, did you F her? What your prophet he choose? Did you F her? Try to take this word and post it in any Islamic form. Let us see their reaction. This is your prophet language. Shame on you, I'm quoting your prophet. And look at the false translation of the Muslim, they say. Properly, you have intercourse with her. Where, where in the Arabic it says intercourse with her? It says, did you F her? Do you see the first translation? Aniktuha is a street language for the F word. It's in the front of your eyes. Are you there? And as long as you are talking about good knowledge, good good language, what about your prophet? He promised you a penis will never go limp or go sleep. What do you think? Uh, this is Mansoor. He changed his name from uh, Mansoor for dinner. You know. <laughs> hey Mansoor, I mean you change your name. It doesn't matter, my friend. I know you. This this is Abdul Mansour, you know, I, I really feel sorry for him. Why you don't call me? Call me, I will let you read whatever you wish. You have one verse to speak about? Okay, I will make you read it. What do you think? Do you dare? You're stupid, like your prophet. I thought you were an atheist, it turned to be your Abdul. Any Muhammadan? My friend, it's your God who could not. The, the Jews always victorious when they are with God and they are loser when they are not. But look what happened. In your God, he says, if 100 of you, if 100 of you, with patient, they can kill a 1,000. The Muslim, they went to war and they've been spanked as never before. Then the coward Muhammad, who he claimed to be a prophet of God, he updated immediately what he just told them. He told them 100 of you can fight, 
1000 read the 1000 became totally different number Twenty of you with patient and preservation, they can fight to hundred, which means one to ten. Then what happened? They went to war. They got a big finger from the enemy. So Allah, He says, now in the present, Allah, He enlightened your task. Now he knows, now, there is a weak spot on you. So, if a hundred of you with patient and preservation, the same conditions, will vanquish two hundred. So, from one to ten to one to two. Do you see the error? If you only know the truth, well, Allah, I know the truth, my friend, and I don't want to get virgins in heaven. I mean, obviously, Allah is the God of the truth, and that's why he promised us a penis will never go limp. I mean, you tell me, help me. Who is save God? He will promise such a promise. What do you think? Hmm? It must be God. Normal promises, you know, this is not a promise can come from a human. What do you think? Isn't it obvious? You see, because a human, he will not think far in, in that, like, in that direction. But God, he think about everything. So now he will send us to heaven and we will have a lot of women to do boom, boom to them. But the private part is not working, brother. You cannot F those women, all of them. There are too many, too many. So look what he said. Prophet of Allah, he swears saying, there is no one of whom Allah will admit the paradise, but Allah will make him marry 72 wives, two from the Huris and 70 from his inheritance from the people of hell. From where? From hell. All of whom will have a desirable, desirable front basses. What does that mean, brother? Let me describe for you. Desirable front basses. Okay. What does that mean? So, brother, Salah, are you with me, Salah? Focus with me, second, focus with me, please. I like you, by the way. So this is the women, who, the women who you inherited from heaven, from hell, sorry. Her hair like is like this, because she is coming from hell, man. She did not camp her hair yet, later, later. So this is the woman, she came from hell. She have... Uh, Two eyes, one nose and one mouth. And this is her neck. And this is her uh, body. And by the way, I am voted according to the most uh, high Italian artist in the world that my art is number one qualification in the world. All right. So this woman, brother, she have a desirable... Alhamdulillah, so beautiful. She have what? She have desirable front basses. Are you with me? Let us here show the front desirable basses. Look at this. I'm not going to draw the one here. 
Alhamdulillah. This is must be from God. Women who have not only a woman, listen carefully. Allah will not just give us women. Those women, they have desirable front passages. Are you there, Salah? The one who is telling me about shame on you? And then your prophet, he says, and a man, he will have a male member which will never go zzz, zzz. <laughs> You are the one who speak about language? A man, Abdul, Abdul, are you with me? Focus, focus now, don't hide. The one who speak about language. Your penis, brother, will have a penis will never become flaccid. Thank you for the translator explanation. I.E. soft and limp. Whew. That's deep. Uh, somebody saying I draw the women without arms. Well, you know arms. You know why you want why you want a woman with arms in heaven. I mean, don't you know what they can do with their arms and their fingers and their nails? Why you want the arms? This way they can do fight you, nothing. They can do nothing, you know, just no arms. We don't want them in heaven with arms. Come on. Just think about it. Just be smart. I mean, this guy is saying well, there's no arms for those women. Don't you know that this is done in purpose? Honestly, you want the women in heaven to have arms? What? You, you are smarter than this. We don't want arms. No nails, no fingers, no arms. That's it. Bingo. This way we can be safe and secure. Huh? Ah, uh, uh, look, look. A guy, he's saying, this is Da'if Hadith, idiot. Uh, so you Muslim, you lie, but Da'if is accepted. First of all, Da'if is accepted. Secondly, if it is Da'if, if it's meant by saying that if that we Muslim we lie about what the Prophet said, thank you very much. That means we cannot trust any Muslim because who is the one who wrote this? You Muslims. Who is the one who printed? You Muslims. And if it's garbage, why it's in your book still? So the if is written the if, which means it's accepted. It have a rank. Go and watch the video of Sheikh Hamza. He says the if argument. Weak hadith is a weak argument. Go watch his video. He laughed at you. Because that means this hadith have a rank. It's not a thrown out. And I'm quoting him. So a Muslim, he tried to defend his religion when he want. And he said, this is da'if. This is da'if. No. You are da'if. You Muslims are da'if. Your religion is da'if. Everything you have is da'if. Your prophet is da'if, ta ta tam. Your God is da'if, ta ta tam. Your Quran is da'if, ta ta tam. And your hadith is da'if. And you are coming here proud about it, says da'if? Is that my problem? <laughs> That's your problem. Da'if. Oh boy. Do we have any Muhammadan would like to call us? Instead of complaining, the one who mentioned da'if and strong, as long as you're expert with da'if, why you don't call me and tell me what does that mean? Are you saying you Muslim, you lie about your prophet? Just say it. Say it, say it, say we Muslim, we write lies. Hmm. Because this is what you are saying to us. We Muslims, we lie about what the prophet said. Who is the one who wrote this book? This is Sunan Ibn Majah. This is one of the six authentic books of Hadith. The six writers authentic, considered the highest. Ibn Majah is one of them. And what you say? You say this is Da'if. So we cannot trust Muslims. That's what we say. Thank you for confirming that you Muslims lie about your Prophet. So what we learn from the Muslim who says this is Da'if, 
We take that Muslims, they say to us, you cannot take seriously what we Muslims say. Uh, ah, here we go. Guys, look at this. He can recite the Quran. Look at this accomplishment. <laughs> hey, people, listen carefully. Free Abdur Abdul Rahman, he is saying, welcome, free Abdul Rahman. You are welcome here, my friend. So he is saying, Can I recite the Quran for you with a true meaning and tajweed? I think I can change your mind. Okay, what about you call me? And I will make you read for me a verse and you can recite it, but you have to give me the meaning. Is that fair, guys? Is that fair? I will give you a very simple verse. You sing it for us. You tell me the meaning and I will be very grateful from you. And you will, uh, I will change my mind. Thank you. What do you think? Can you do it? I'm not going to debate you about it. You know, it's up to you. I mean, we can stay talking as much as you want, but I will give you a verse. You recite it. You tell us what is the meaning. You can hang up if you want. You can stay if you want. What do you think? And I promise you, I will give you a very short verse, extremely short. It's like Ahmed Najad before he wear his shoes. So what do you think, Abdul Rahman? And I have another, you know, like, I don't know why he's hesitating. What is the problem, guys? Why do you think he's hesitating? He asked for it. You choose the verse? Okay, no problem. Guys, he will call me. He will choose the verse. Go ahead. Go ahead. He will choose the verse. Remember carefully. He will choose the verse. Okay. I will go by your choice. The chapter you mentioned to me is going to be the chapter you choose. Go ahead. Go on. Look like he is not really, he cannot recite the whole Quran, any verse. He know maybe one verse. He can recite only that verse, that's it. <laughs> that's why he, he want to choose the verse. Give us the verse you want to recite and, and, and uh, text me in Skype, please. So I can call you. I will put it in the screen. Go ahead, I'm waiting. I mean, I cannot make it more easier than this. I mean, you said your verse. I said my verse. Okay, no problem. No, it's not fair unless the verse is chosen by a Muslim. Okay, no problem. You said, my, my, my friend, are you going to spend the day talking about which verse? I said any verse you want. Stop your drama, man. I mean, you see, you see, they are just making excuses not to call. They, they are ashamed of their religion. If this guy is so proud, I am doing as you wish. You said you, a verse of your choice, no problem. Christian Prince, no, it's not fair unless the verse is chosen by a Muslim and you cannot interrupt or say rude things. You never had any one recited for you. Okay, no problem. I will give you one minute to recite the verse. It's a verse. Shouldn't take even 30 seconds. Recite the verse. I will not interrupt. Go ahead. And you recite it, by the way. Don't play for me videotape or audio, you know. Your voice. Go ahead. No problem. 
Still, you don't dare to call. You're just making excuse. You're like the guy who claimed he can dive in the ocean. And he said to him, he said, you know, he said, I can do it. I can show you in the swimming pool. And then, okay, well, no problem. Swimming pool, swimming pool. No ocean. Here we go. This is a swimming pool. He says, no, I want to do it in jacuzzi. He said, okay, no problem. This is jacuzzi. He said, no, I want to do it in the bathtub. I said, no problem. This is bathtub. So it doesn't matter what we give you. We say yes, yes, yes. Still, you will not do it. Then you read Muslim. All of those are ashamed of the religion, as you see. Not a single Muslim. Look at them. We said, who is the one who can show us that the Quran is saying the truth, that if this is a book made by other than Allah, is going to have a lot of contradiction. What the Muslim they do? They don't dare to take the challenge. They don't dare to show us that Yes, Quran teach, and we can prove it. Because they knew the Quran is false. Where is my Zoom link? I don't Zoom, my friend. You call me in Skype. What Zoom? You Zoom. Uh, do we have any Muhammad that would like to call us? Anyone? What was the link? It's in the message. You see in the, uh, the, the message in blue? It's in the top. Copy my uh, the link. And the admin keep posting it non-stop. Muhammad Shifan, he is saying stupid CP argument. My friend Shifan, why you don't call me and show me your smart argument? What do you think? I mean, you know, all what we see from Mohammedan, you are a stupid, you are a donkey, you do not know what you are talking about, you have no idea, but, but they will not call us and show us, give us the idea, prove us wrong. They just complain. And the reason they don't dare to call, because simply they knew that they don't themselves have an idea how to answer. Why it's so hard? Call, we will have a nice conversation. Let us have a nice conversation. No bad language, no cursing, no, you know. Let us have a good conversation. The Quran says, do they not consider the Quran, had it been from any other than Allah, they would surely have found therein much discrepancy? Can it be in private meeting? Why in private meeting? Are you a female? Why you want to be in private with me? A second ago, you were a hero. Now you want to do it in private. And now I'm sure if I say yes in private, you will say I cannot do it. Can I send my dad? Guys, we keep compromising, saying whatever you wish. Now he want to private. No, my friend, I have no time for your private. Take a hike. Do we have any proud Muslim? He believe in his God. He is sure that Islam really is a religion coming from a true God. He can call us. Are you saying to me from the hundreds and the hundreds of people are watching? Not a single Muslim. He is a proud about his religion. He is willing to call. And he knew how right he is. Hmm. Anyone? So why if somebody is a Western, he do not know anything about Islam, you Muslim, you will line up to talk to him. Here you are, chicken. Just face it.
Habasha hand handbook haba hasabara are you a muslim hasabara hasabara are you a muslim my friend see we have muslims here but they are scared terrified they are not sure really that the religion is a religion. Right? Uh, as an example, look at this guy. As a Muslim saying, the Quran speak about something very nice. The Quran says that uh, the front head of a human being is res responsible for lying. But the Arabic word, my friend, is for hair and the proof of that is in front of you we will drag him from it do you drag a person from his uh, uh, the front of his head why he have a horn there you drag him from his forelock and look what you muslim you do suddenly this hair is responsible for lying you see this is your text this is your translation. If you want to see how Muslims desperately lie to make the religion look like a religion, read with me Allah. I'm not going even to use any other translation. I'm going to use yours. Is it you who use this word for luck? It's you who use it. So if we search right now in Prophet Google, peace be upon him, what we will see? It's here. Because you would drag him from there. You drag the person from in the front, not from his ass. <laughs> so it's a hair. And now it says, explain the fortinal cortex responsible for lying. I mean, do you see how you Muslims even lie? In the verse talking about how Allah, he discovered where you lie. <laughs> oh boy. What about we read the interpretation for it and then we would die we would die laughing. Do you like? Why you don't call me? Do you grab the person from his brain? Do you grab a person from his brain or do you grab him from his hair? So for luck, this is your translation, is his hair. Secondly, since when the for luck is where the sin is. Isn't it, this is the contradiction for the Quran? Let us go to the Quran. You see, we are talking about contradiction. Here we go. Isn't it your God, Allah, he says, Khatam Allahu ala quloobahum? And this is the verse saying, if you, there is a contradiction, that means this book is not from Allah. Let us go. Here we go. This is the Quran. Where is the, where is the bad? Is in the brain? Or it's in the heart it's in the heart it is in the earring it is in the scene not in the head not in the brain and who is the one who made them not to see Allah so Allah is shaitan Allah has set a seal on their heart on their hearing on their eyes is a veil so who is the one who prevented you from knowing God Allah, not shaitan. Are we following, guys? <laughs> Do you see it? Who is the true shaitan? Who is the one who sealed the heart of people from listening, from knowing the truth, from knowing God? Allah. The Quran in front of you. The verse before it says, well, do you think you can convert them? They will not believe. Why? Allah saying to Muhammad, they will not believe. And by the way, later they became believers. I mean, do you see how false the prophecy he, he prophesied that those people, they will not believe. You warn them, you don't warn them, they will not believe. Later, all of them, they became believers. By the sword. 
And then Allah he explained why they cannot believe and why they will not believe. They will not believe. Why? Because Allah, he set a seal on their heart. So how you say to me that the other verse saying that the Nasiya, according to you, this is the, the head, the front, is where they lie. When the Quran says it is their heart. And Allah is the one who sealed their heart. Any Muslim? Who is Shaitan? Who is the one don't want us to not to believe? Shaitan. Habarasha, as long as I'm making things up, I think that will be good for you because you can call me and you can get me busted in front of everybody. Is that fair, guys? If I am making things up, this is your golden opportunity to call and say, hey, let us open and read together. And then people will not listen to me no more. But because you know I'm not making things up, you know that you are lying, not me. Otherwise, why you don't make a challenge to the one who is making things up to prove what he say? Call me. What do you think? I am sure anyone, anyone who have strength of knowledge, sure about his religion, he will be happy to take such a challenge. But because you don't dare, you know that you are the one is lying. Any Abdul? Any Muhammadan. Who there? Who there? You know, sometimes I feel like like a Muslim sitting in front of the mosque and those believers, the believers, they don't give a penny. Begin for help. Who care? Who dare? Hey, Hamoud, we answered that already. You are late, my friend. The Quran never answered the atoms. That's a false. The Quran mentioned an ant, and you Muslim, you lie. You see, this is this is your lying. This is your lying uh, stories. Uh, here we go. Hamoud, he come with the same lie. This is Mr. Gary, he mentioned. He said, Hamoud, 99, he said, Christian prince, the Quran mentioned atoms. The Bible does not. Show me where the Quran mentioned the word atoms. If you show me, I'm going to shave my 20 foot beard. Can you? The Quran mentioned the word ants. And you must tell you lie about it in the translation. And this is the interpretation made by you. This is chapter 34, verse number 3. Tafsir ibn Abbas, the cousin of your prophet. Here it says, even not as small as a red ant. Do you see it? So you Muslim, when you lie, your lie is so big to the point an ant became atoms. Actually, there's a guy, he is, an, uh, he is a companion of Muhammad, his name Abu Dhar. So now this guy is the father of atoms? <laughs> this is a word that exists in Arabic before Muhammad anyway. So if this is a discovery of Muhammad, that will be more stupid than you to say so because this is a word the Arab they use all their life. 
For what? For a small ants, specifically small red ants. It's in front of you. Is that your Islamic translation or this is my translation? If you don't like uh, Ibn Abbas, we can change. We can go to a Jalalain. You Muslims lie. You love to lie. Do we have any Abdul would like to call us? You see here in the translation here, in the English he says the weight of an atom. In Arabic it says dharra. In English they say the atom. Liars. They love to lie. Any Muhammadan who love to lie, dare to call me and lie to me. Maybe your lies will work, you never know. Try it. I believe the reason they are not calling because they knew their lies doesn't work. Not with me. Otherwise, they will be lined up and they will be calling non-stop. Hmm? Any Muslim. Any Muslim. The Harish, the Hari, the Haritin, the Haratin mean atoms simply look it up yeah I, I, I do not need to look it up you idiot here we go this is your prophet they ask him about killing the children of non-muslims and the same word is used there and there's a campaign of your prophet his name is Abu Dhar Dhar if the word Dhar mean or Dharra mean atoms that's mean the Arab who come with this word before Muhammad, long before Muhammad, they are scientists. But this is your prophet. This, this is a word used for something small, specifically when you speak about, uh, you can use it for even sand. Do you see Abu Dhar? Abu Dhar. See it? Abu Dhar. In, in the English translation, they say Abu Dhar, D H A R, which is funny. Abu Dhar. You have the father of the ants, you have Abu Huraira, the father of the cats, you have, I mean, uh, endless. Do we have any Muslim here? Who dare to call? And prove us wrong. And you know, like it's really funny when Muslim they speak about science. Uh, for saying things, so I have to account. Ah, uh, so now look, look, look at the deception. Dharra have many meaning now. No, it doesn't. Dharra have one meaning in the language today, because you know the Arab they try to find something you know fit with the science discovery, so they say uh, we will use the word dharra to speak about atoms because in the language dharra speak about the smallest thing, which is the ant. But Dharra never was about atoms, never was before. And now today in the language, if you want to speak scientifically, you cannot even use that word. But in the dictionary, the word Dharra, and we are talking about a language exists in the time of Muhammad, mean ants. And that's why even your Islamic interpretation you see, this is your this is your Islamic, this is the cousin of your prophet. Why he's saying 
and if it's not and why he, why he is saying that this is the cousin of your prophet if your prophet he means something else he will say it means something else but he said not even small as a red ant liars and the same time if you read the verse after it you would die laughing what about listen guys who dare to call me and read for me chapter 34 verse number one verse number two verse number three let us have fun then you will see that science who want to do it I'm not going even to ask you about a different chapter if you call me about this chapter only. Huh? Who want to read it? Anyone there to call me? We will read the book you choose, the chapter you choose. Anyone? Do you know why they were not called? Because this is the same chapter speaking about the flying carpet of Solomon. Science. Do you see the science? Flying carpet of cinnamon can fit for 600,000 chair and all his kingship equipment, army, soldiers, fighters, cook, chickens, animals, all of them, they fly in the top of the flying carpet of a prophet Solomon. Science. The same chapter. Mr. Atoms, are you there? So the same chapter speak about the flying carpet. The same chapter the Muslim clean the prophet. The Quran speak about atoms. Hmm. Salah, he says an ex-Muslim, he referred me to this channel. And you know, I mean, look, look at you. You are coming here to complain. But you just said an ex-Muslim, obviously he left Islam because of me. He referred you to this channel. And you keep calling me quack. And you speak about to speak with respect. From the first second you came and you make a post, you call me quack. What I shall call you, donkey? Well, I have respect for donkeys. They are nice animals and friendly. You are not. You are the same as the Quran speak of. The Quran says, that there is some people who carry books, he was insulting the Jews, they are the same as donkeys who carry books, but they cannot read them. But if you think about it, who is the one who can cannot carry the books? Muhammad. Muhammad, they gave him the Torah, he cannot read the Torah. Chapter 62, verse number 5 says, The likeness of those who were entrusted with the obligation of the Torah, i.e., Blah, blah, blah. I mean, look at the translation, i.e. obey. Where, where, where this text is coming from? I mean, look at this liars when they translate. All of this is not in the Quran. Change the translator, you will see different text, totally different book. As if we are reading different book. Look what happened. It became so small. The same attitude of those who were charged with the Torah, but who subsequently failed of those obligation. This is what the Quran is saying. I will go with it, no problem. Is that of the donkey which carry a huge thumbs, but he didn't understand them not. But this is Muhammad. Muhammad, he carried the Torah. Muhammad, he carry books. He cannot read a single letter of them. And he cannot understand. To the point, Muhammad, he thinks that the Christians, their trinity is Allah and Mary. Who is the third? 
Ready, Muslim, can't tell me? Any Muslim can help us? They cannot. Look at this Muslim here. I mean, look, look, look what the Muslim they say. I find it really embarrassing when the Muslim they try to defend the religion. So this guy Muhammad saying the bewitched Jesus. Okay, why you don't call me and let us talk about the bewitched? If you can find me a verse in the Bible saying Jesus was bewitched, you are a winner. Is that fair, guys? If you can't find me a verse in the Bible says Jesus was bewitched. You are my hero. However, as long as you are making fun of the one who bewitched, isn't your Muslims believe that Muhammad was bewitched? To the point, instead of having sex with his wife, he have sex with the goat? Let's go to the proof. You see, we are not like you. We make things just to insult. We have a proof. Here we go. Is that your prophet wife, his first witness, Aisha? And this is Al-Bukhari, Sahih Hadith, saying that the prophet continued for such and such period, imagining that he had intercourse with his wives, but in fact he was not. Why? Because, here it says, the angels, they came to Muhammad, he says, what's wrong with this man? The later replied, he was under the effect of magic. Maybe you don't like this one. Let us go to different hadith. <laughs> the Muslim, they use even the word bewitched clearly with no hesitation. Ayesha, she said, and this is Al-Bukhari, the Prophet Allah pray on him, not for him, salute him, was bewitched. So he began to imagine that he had done a thing which in fact he had not done. So you are insulting Jesus, but all of us, we knew that Jesus, he defeat Satan, defeat demons. He gave orders to demons. You're a prophet himself. He have a demon inside him. And this is in your book. And this is authentic book saying that Muhammad was controlled by demons. Do you see it? Anyone? Anyone can explain to me how shaitan can control Muhammad if he's a prophet of God? Anyone? No Muslim can do it. They are ashamed of their prophet. They are ashamed of their God. And the funny is that Allah, he promised Muhammad a protection, yet Muhammad was bewitched. Bewitched means shaitan control him. Abdul saying to us, why you don't read Luke chapter 11, verse 14, 23? Well, why you don't call me and I will read it and everybody will laugh at you? Are you ashamed? You see, you don't even dare to read for us what you are saying. You don't dare to answer about your prophet because you know that you are a fraud. Actually, the verse you are quoting for us, you idiot. The Jews, they say to Jesus, well, he is controlling the devil by using the devil, he controlled the demons by the devil power. So he said to them, you idiot, if I'm using the devil power, how I can defeat the devil by the devil? This was the verse you are quoting for me. So the verses you are quoting for me from Luke is additional proof that Jesus controlled the devil and controlled demon and he have authority to kick them out. So he said to them, if I cast out demon by Bezalbul, which is the name for Shaitan in the Hebrew language, one of the names, by whom you, your son cast them out, therefore you will be the judge. But if it will be, it, it is by the finger of God that I cast out demon, then the kingdom of God has come to you, upon to you. So Jesus saying to them, I am. 
the kingdom of God which is coming to you. And you're accusing me that I am controlling, I am casting out demon by the devil. Same time we see Muhammad, he have no control of any demon. He himself was controlled by the demon. So you are an idiot. You quote for us verses clearly proving that Jesus, he free people from demon. And your prophet, as you see in the front of you in the screen, he was controlled by demon. How that can happen? How Jesus can cast Satan out? And Muhammad, he can't even cast Satan out of himself. You see, when the Muslim, they say bewitched, what does that mean? Who is a Muslim can explain to us what does that mean that Muhammad, he was bewitched? Hasbara is saying amazing. Yeah, as amazing Hasbara. Focus with me. Otherwise, I will send you free shipping and handling. The Quran is amazing, my friend. Here we go. The Quran is made by someone who was bewitched. Some Muslims, they say that Muhammad was bewitched for 12 months. Some Muslims, they say six months. It doesn't matter how much. So Muhammad was making Quran all this time and he is under the control of the devil. How you solve this problem now? It's in front of you. All the Muslim who keep saying, contact me, I will explain to you, you are a potato, I will get out, block you. I give you a chance to call me, I put your text in the chat, I put your text in the screen, and you are a coward, and you are still saying, contact me if you like to. Here we go, answer the question. What kind of a prophet sent by God, he was bewitched by a man. And the man, he used shaitan to control him. And if Muhammad now is being bewitched, controlled for a year, according to Muslims, how many chapters within one year Muhammad he gave to you? It's from shaitan. You see, if I am the one who is using the word bewitched, the Muslim, they will say is lying. This is your website. This is the most authentic book after the Quran. And the one is witnessing for Muhammad being bewitched is Aisha. So how much Quran you receive from the bewitched prophet when he was bewitched? Any Muslim? Read it. He was bewitched. There's a recording of me debating a Muslim. He explained to me that it took Allah one year to solve, to, to, to make the bewitch out of Muhammad. Why? Because the guy, he made 12 knots. He put what? 12 knots. The Muslim believe in voodoo. This is a voodoo religion. So the guy, he made 12 knots for Muhammad and it took Allah 12 months to take the knots off. Do you see how powerful Allah is? Jesus, he cast the demon in second out. They said to him, what do you want from us, son of God? They know him. Even demon, right away they recognize him. What do you want from us, son of God? In the Quran you will see that even Muhammad, he, you know, he teach Muslims fictions and superstitions that somebody can make knots to control you. And the Muslim translation is hypocrite and lying. Look at this. From the mischief of those who practice secret arts. But this is not what the Quran is saying. This is not what the Quran is saying. Change the translation. Or translator, sorry. This is Yusuf Ali. We go to Big Tal. Look what will happen now. Still the same false translation. There's no knots. The word knots is not exist in the translation. Muhammad Asad. I'm just changing, you know, changing the translation. Look, look at this. All human being bent on awkward in the in divorce. What the heck is that? Change the translator. 
جو تو خطاب محمد خطاب ها لوك ات ذس وات هابند سو اول ذا ادر ترانسليشن دي توك اوف وات ذا فيرس ريلي از سين اند فروم ذا ايفل دوس ويتش از كاستين سبيل باي بلوين انتو ذا ناتس اند باي ذا واي ذا قران دوز نوت سي ذا وورد ويتش از It says those who blow in the knots, there's no spell, there's no witches, there's no casting. All of those is a false translation. They lie. What is the word witches in the Quran? Who can who can get me busted? What is the word casting? What is the word spell? None. All what the verse is saying, and from the evil of the one who blowing in the knots. So the stupid Muhammad teaching the Muslims that somebody can blow in the knot, he can control you. Who of you here believe in the voodoo? Anyone here believe in voodoo? Who believe in voodoo? Be honest. If you believe, it's okay. Tell me. Anyone believe in the in the voodoo? Voodoo is a stupid thing. This, this is not such a thing. You have to be mentally, you know, ill. People fool you. What voodoo? Here we go. Do voodoo for me. What about those who can do voodoo? Do voodoo to the kings of the world. Control them. Do voodoo for the stock market. This is, I mean, this is silly. And look at the translation. You change translation one after one. All of them, they lie. What voodoo? Blowing in the knots? So this is God speaking that there's somebody can blow in the knot and he can control you. Hey Muslims, who of you can blow in the knot until tomorrow to control Joe Biden? So he will convert to Islam, bewitch him. He's already bewitched actually. He do not need to do a lot of work. I'm going to blow in the knot to control the machine which played the lotto. I'm gonna get rich, man. Change my car. Too old. And if you, there is a girl, she don't like you. What about we blow on the knot and she will like you? I mean, we can change the whole world. And then if we ask the Muslim, by the way, who is the one who opened the school of Hori Buter? What the Muslim they will say? Uh, Hori Buter is fiction. Liar. It's in the Quran. Allah, he sent two angels to teach black magic. Where they, where they landed? In the, in, the, in the tower of the Babylon. I mean, can you believe it? This stupid book, they speak about science in the Quran. So this guy, Gary, he did not see the stupidity of this book. Allah, he sent two angels to open a school of Hori Buter to teach you black magic. Before you join the school, you have to sign disclaimer. What the disclaimer says, brother, before and that neither those taught anyone such a thing, which means black magic, without saying voodoo, without saying disclaimer, we are only for a trial. So don't do blasphemy. Look what the heck. So this God, he opened a school to teach you magic and he make you sign disclaimer before you enter the classroom. So why are you teaching them? And what make it more funny, if you read what is the purpose of this school, like what kind of a black magic he is teaching Allah, is to make the wife and the husband fight. I mean, do you see the noble purpose? They learned from them means so to, to sow discord between man and his wife. 
Like, what the heck? So Allah, he opened a school. And the purpose of the school, to teach how to do black magic, so my neighbor can fight with his wife? It must be God. Only God, he do this. I mean, do you see the noble reason to send the angels to the, to, to the earth? To open a school, brother, so the wife and the husband, they will fight. Who of you here is married? If you are married, give me one. Who is married here? I mean, you cannot, now I know why nobody can do anything to me. I'm not married. You cannot do black magic to me. Because the black magic work only if you are married. La 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 la. But what the heck? So now, if you are married, let me do black magic so you fight with your wife. Shankapu chukaku karukiku. Usu sa si sa. Panzaramun Bruce Lee. Shuka hushi. Shu shi shu. Now, brother, you go home, your wife, she will fight with you. All of you, I did black magic for all of you. Your wife, she will hold you from your hair. You will hold her from her ears. And you will start fighting. And then by the end of tomorrow, you will fight for divorce. And who is the one who taught me how to do that? Allah. Who sent two angels, the most expert angels, Harut. Look at their name, Harut and Marut. Look how beautiful. Uh, Root and Marut, they open a school, they teach you how to be fool. Harut uh, and Marut, they open a school, so you can be Abdul. Harut uh, and Marut, they make you genius, so you can always say yes. Harut uh, and Marut, they control your brain, and they make you stool. What the heck is that? And then they make a book speaking about science in the Quran? By the way, if you want me to take the the spell of a black magic I cast on you, the married ones, you have to send me some uh, a gift, okay? I will take the spell from you, all right? Like you have to bribe me. I'm telling you, you want the spell to take uh, off on you and your wife should don't get divorced, okay? You have to give me some gift like a uh, falafel. Okay, falafel is expensive, okay. What about half falafel, half? I'm like, come on, you're so, you're so cheap. Even how falafel you will not pay for it? What kind of customers I have? Okay, listen. Do you know what the lawyer will cost you for divorce? A lot of money. So pay for falafel before it's too late. All right? Can you be a Christian and wear hijab? My friend, there's nothing is called hijab. Even in the Quran. I mean, this the hijab is a stupid thing. Hijab is not exist in the Quran except as a veil. Uh... You see, hijab, in the old days, all people, they wear hijab, including men. Don't you know? Hijab is something to cover yourself because of the dirt, the dust, the desert. So men, women, they wear it. What does this have to do with religion anyway? However, when the Muslim, they speak about hijab, it was for a very simple reason. It's not to cover the hair, it's to cover the ass. Omar al Khattab, when he come to the Prophet house, he always spy at his wives when they are doing poo poo. It was because of Muhammad, friend Omar, spying at his wives when they do poo poo. And as you see, it was night. So you can't see her hair, especially those are Arab, their hair is so black, dark. So what was the problem? The women she is doing poo, poo and look at the filthy, the companion of Muhammad. He says to her, you cannot hide yourself from us, we recognize you. 
I mean, can you see how stupid, filthy this man is? This is the, those are the friends of Muhammad. Imagine your wife is outside to go to the bathroom. Your friend is coming and now your wife is doing poo-poo. And what the friend he said to her? You can't hide from me. I can see you. So it was not about the hair, it was about the ass. And then Muhammad, he took what Omar he said many times for him and he put it in the Quran. This is why Omar he said, Allah he agree with me in three. Some other places says 10, some they say 17, some they say 20, something, some they say 100. What Allah he agree with him? Allah agree with him about the Kaaba, about the hijab, the place to pray, and about the divorce of Muhammad wives, as you see. And Allah, he sent the verses the same as I have said. Read carefully. You see the Muslim, they say nobody can make Quran. Look, does it say, so the verses came the same as I had said was revealed. Exactly. Hijab is not even a cover for the head. It's a curtain. It's a veil. You have to veil yourself totally. You cannot veil yourself by covering your head. How we can prove that? Easy. In the Quran, you go even Allah himself, you have a hijab. So where Allah he speak, Allah will not speak to anyone except from behind the hijab. Behind. This is the hijab. What the Muslim translate as veil. So Allah speaking from behind it. So if the hijab is a word mean hair cover, that's mean Allah he cover his hair and nobody can see his hair. This is the word hijab in front of you. Here we go in Arabic. Allah speak not to anyone except from behind the hijab. So people, they have wrong understanding and the Muslim, they are ignorant about their religion and they say stupid things have nothing to do really what the Quran is saying and what the religion meant. Hijab is not a cover for the hair. Hijab is a curtain. Muslim women, they should hide behind the curtain, not cover their head with hijab. Hijab is a curtain, is a veil. You veil yourself totally. Nobody can see you. So what the Muslim did later, they wear a veil. Why? Because now we have the curtain, all of us, all of it, in, in top of us, so we can go in the street. And actually, we find tons of stories, which is very funny about the hijab. As an example, Aisha, she took a shower in front of two men. One of them is her brother, and another one is a stranger. Naked behind half curtain. Let me see if I can find you the hadith. Let me see if I can find this hadith uh, in English first. I don't think I can find it in English, but we can use Google Translation. Ah, I found it in English. Here we go. Read carefully with me. You see, I showed you the word hijab, right? Previously in the Quran. Here we go. This is the word hijab. Hijab. You can take a screenshot, by the way. Then you can search it for in, in Google. Hijab. So what was Aisha doing? Aisha brother and I and the guy is a stranger. He went with Aisha brother and he asked her about the bath, the prophet he used to do. Imagine the woman, she took a bath in the front of them.
And if this hijab, which is a curtain, is totally preventing them from seeing, so what the point of me doing the practice to show them? This is see-through curtain. Or maybe half curtain, because she is showing them how to do it. So Aisha, she is taking shower in front of her brother, who is adult man, and a strange man, who is not her brother, and she is totally naked. How to take a bath? And this is Sahih al-Bukhari. And you know, you ask yourself, how silly is that? I mean, those two men, they could not find somebody to ask except Aisha and to do it in the front of them. Why she is doing it? Hey, Aisha, how the Prophet used to take a bath? And you know, if, if a Muslim want to say, Aisha, she was wearing her clothes. Well, how they can see if she is behind the curtain, they cannot see anything. How they can see that she put hair, water in her head, and how they can see that? And the question is how to do it, so she have to show them. So most likely this hijab was a small partition between her and them, and still they can see her. And if the Muslim, they say, well, it doesn't say she was naked, that is even more horrible. If a woman, she is wearing a clothing, and she put water in the top of her top, what will happen? You know what will happen, right? You know what will happen, right? Without clothing. Or with the clothing. It doesn't make any difference. Actually, some they might find it more attractive. <laughs> I search in Google for women swimming with, with the... I cannot show them. I mean, this is too much. We can't go that far. But you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> no, no, I cannot show this. This is, will be too much uh, exposure. But I think all of you, you get, the, uh, you, get, you get the idea without showing it on the screen. So, you know, when those people, they make books claiming that the Quran is a book of God and have knowledge, and amazing Quran. And then when we check the Quran, we die laughing. It's a fairy tale story, it's flying carpet, sperm coming from the man backbone, women have a sperm coming from her ribs, the, the eyes coming from mountains in heaven. Uh, uh, Allah, he shoots stars at the shaitan ass so he will not spy. Uh, the, the, uh, the earth is in the top of a, of a, of a goat or a cow, uh, uh, the horn uh, in the top of a whale. I mean, oh boy. Yet they claim that the Quran is an amazing book. So what do you think, Muslims? We ask you, we challenge you to join us. None of you dare to call us. None of you. Do you know why? Because you know Islam is a fraud. If Christian Prince is a blonde American, European, he don't speak Arabic, he do not know anything about Islam, you will see a long line of Muslims calling. The devil, he will use many people to promote his devilish ideas and you know very simple way to know what is from God or not the Bible says the Lord he says from their fruit you shall know them 
if I write a book, let us say I write a book and this book is so good, but still my fruit is ugly. What does that mean? From their fruit you shall know them. But we examine the fruit of the Quran, we see it's an evil, ugly, disgusting. Not only it's full of fairy tale stories, laughable stories, contradictions, unvalid information, history, wrong history, wrong, or even the Arabic is horrible. Even the Arabic is horrible. You know, if you go in the Quran, the Muslim, they say to you, no one can make Quran like this Quran, but we just showed you that Omar, he says, Allah, he took from me as I said. The verses came as I said. Allah taking Quran from Omar. Then we have verses, it's called Satanic verses. This is Salman Rushdie, have a book about it which made the Muslims very angry. I do not know why the guy is telling people what you Muslims say. You Muslims say that there is satanic verses received by Allah, by, by shaitan to Muhammad. Even the Quran confirm. Why you get upset? Because those are Muhammad and they cannot take it. Somebody is criticizing the stupidity of their book, even if he is showing exactly what is written there. Don't quote it. But just to show you how stupid the one who made the Quran, extremely stupid. One of you actually, he sent me uh, an email in Patreon. The Muslim uh, said uh, to this uh, person that the Quran came as a final book for don't we hear always about like software update this is how God he work he update but you see software update because there's a new discovery there's a new technology uh, there's a new uh, uh, idea better ideas and this is will take time but Allah, he update his software because he have bugs in his book. So this Quran, Muhammad keep receiving updates. So he says something in the morning, afternoon he cancel it. Can you believe it? Something wrong with this website is not opening. It's case a network error. What kind of religion this religion is? Let's try again. The website is down. So the Quran says, no, nothing Allah he said of his verses, he abrogated or he caused to be forgotten but he will make something better or similar. Here you notice the stupidity. Allah will cause you to forget Quran. Why? So he can make a better Quran. Have you ever heard of more stupid idea statement more than this this is a self admission made by the god of islam aka muhammad that the stupid god he notice that he need to fix so what he do his stupid quran is full of errors and mistakes so he will go to the quran and he will change the quran and he will cause you to forget quran and then he will something send something Quran like the Quran he made you forget or better. This website is still not working, so we will go to the different website. What we can do. Chapter two. For some reason this website is not functioning. 106. 
This is a clear evidence that this is cannot be a book from God. For God, he don't say such a silly, stupid thing. Look like there's something wrong with my internet. No, no, it's working. Allah, he mentioned that what was abrogated in the Quran and that which, which, which uh, was not abrogated has direct reference to the claim of Quraysh. Who said the prophet to the prophet, O Muhammad, why do you command us to do something and then you forbid it? You see, the guy he commanded them something, and then he, the same person, Muhammad, he says, Don't do it. He changed his mind. In different interpretation, let us see this one. They say, look at Muhammad in the morning, read carefully. When the disbeliever began to de 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 deride the matter of abrogation saying that one day Muhammad enjoys his companions to one thing and then the next day he forbid it. The next day. Not next century. And when Muhammad, he enjoy the command, he is enjoying the command of Allah. So how Allah, he make a command in the morning after less than 12 hours later, we have a command to forbid the previous command. Are you with me? And the funny is, this is in their books. You see, if we are showing you a book written by Christian Prince, it will say Christian Prince saying what Christian Prince should say about Islam. He don't like Muhammad. He hate Muhammad. He think he's evil, but the prophet is not evil. But this is their book. This is their scholars, and this this is their you know, resource. He enjoy command in the morning. The command is coming from God. So he stand. Allahu Akbar. Allah told me you should do this second day less than 12, 12 hours he say don't do this isn't it obvious that this person is even mentally ill and then what he say in Arabic he says any verses we delete or abrogate or we cause to be forgotten we will bring something similar or better that is hilarious. Allah will make Quran better than the Quran. See, something wrong with this website. You know, I cannot find the verses when I try to open. Oh, finally, here. Okay, finally, it's working. Whenever, whatever verses, read with me carefully. This is the, the false Muslim translation who always try to duct tape their cult and their prophet. Whatever verses we abrogate or cause to be forgotten, we bring better one or like, therefore. What the heck? And if you will bring the likeness of it, why you want to make us forget it? You know what I mean? So this God, he, you ask the Muslim, is the Quran preserved? They say yes. The Quran says no, the Quran is not preserved. Allah caused you to forget the Quran. Who caused the Quran to be forgotten? The Muslim, they say shaitan. Wrong. Allah. So this God, he made you, he made Quran for you. And then he caused you to forget the Quran. Okay, why you want to cause them to forget the Quran? Is it a shameful thing? And did they? There is tons of verses which is abrogated, is not forgotten. So my friends, as you see, this is a shish kebab religion. We Arab Christians, we laugh at it. Western, because they don't speak Arabic, they don't have access to the 
bathroom library. Al Khomeini he said to the Muslim Sunni, "You have a huge library of bathroom. Suppose the Al Khomeini is better. Suppose the Shia are better, but trust me, the same. Both of them they have the same garbage. But as you see, this is a very stupid cult. Have zero ethic. Not only violent, not only fairy tales, not only against history. Even the names are wrong. History is wrong." Everything is wrong. But even the simple logic about God cannot be true. God, he makes something in the morning. He order in the morning. He's a prophet. He forbid it afternoon. They always lie, hoping that there is someone between us is a foolish person have zero education. And this is why what we do is very important. So your kids, your wife, your family, they will not be fooled. We are putting between your, your hands very powerful information so you can fight this cult. And as you see, somebody mentioned in the chat, uh, Iran. As you see, the Iranian Muslims, they are desperate to leave this cult. What Islam brought for them? Shame. Depression. When an Islamic regime tried to practice Islam, what will happen? Islam is not practical, is not even human. You go to Iran, you are allowed to rent a woman for sex for three hours, two hours, but you cannot walk in the street without hijab. You see the, the moral police? The moral police, they support you if you are a female and you rent your body for sex. It's halal. If you show your hair, we will kill you. But giving your vagina for the exchange of money is okay. Do you see how faithy this cult is? Islam might be attractive for the foolish one for some time because they did not know what Islam is. But when Islam ruled them, they spit on it. You see, the Egyptian, they have the Muslim Brotherhood ruling them for almost a year. Before the end of the year, more than 40 million Egyptian Muslims went in the street against Islam. In the beginning, they voted for them because they thought, okay, you know what? We tried everything. Let us try the religious Muslims. Those, they can fix the country. They are religious. But when they took over, it turned to be that the religious is more filthy than the non-religious. And their corruption is way more it's like Erdogan. Erdogan, he speaks too much of the Quran. He himself, he's a sheikh. He used to work as a sheikh officially. Night club, prostitution, disco, whiskey, uh, drugs. I mean, go just go to Turkey and see. Just search right now. Night life in Turkey. So Erdogan and his Islamic party controlling Turkey for more than 20, 25 years. What is Turkey now? how much Islamic it is. His wife, she wore hijab. When they asked his minister, why you don't close the night clubs? He said, who is going to pay for our salary? All the income of Turkey is coming from night clubs. But Erdogan, he keep talking about Islam and Islam is a solution. But you go to Turkey, you know, by the way, I received, I received a, a copyright strike. Uh, for, you know, you remember the, the video we played for you before about uh, the one who come with the science in the Quran, Harun Yahya? Do you remember? This, you know, imagine this guy, this is Cap. He, uh, he don't want me to play the video. Hmm? 
I mean, they are posting themselves the videos. You see, this is what I like about Muslims. Uh, they are really funny. They themselves, they post the videos. And then when we play their videos, they complain. This is a Muslim religious channel. And this is Adnan Oktar, the one who he himself, he come, the first one who come with Quran and science. And those are the girls who attend his program, not like me. I mean, look at the dudes in my program. According to the, the Google, according to YouTube, nine, almost 90% of people who attend my program is males. So there's less than 10% 10, 10, 10 females. But look, mashallah. So this guy, he complained to YouTube because I have no right to play his videos. The guy is dancing, she's kebab, hummus. Look at this, man. I want to do program like this. I want to own a yacht. Invite all the versions. I'm for sure none of them is a version. You can tell. And do dawah. Nobody, even Erdogan, never complained because he was supporting him. The guy, he made a mistake. He said he support Golan, the enemy of Erdogan. Right away, he put him in jail. They accused him of tons of crimes. He is a bad person. But this guy is doing this for the last 20 years. When Erdogan was ruling. Alhamdulillah. That is a program, not like my program. Man, oh man. If I can get actually those uh, 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 people to attend my programs, I would get millions of viewers immediately. You know? And the funny here, it says, Turkish cult leader sentenced to 1,075 years. Why? Why is a cult leader? What he did? What do you mean cult leader? Go and watch the videos of Yasser Zakir Naik. What what is name the guy? Uh, uh, Yusuf is useless. Yusuf State. He saw his book. He says this is what we need. This is what we need, brother. He was going to do a speech, and then he saw the book of Harun Yahya and he said yes I'm not going to play any videos because you know them here we go Sheikh Yusuf State speak about Harun Yahya and he is praising him so he was their hero what happened When he saw the book of Harun Yahya, he said, this is what is missing. So all the science of Islam and the Quran is coming from Harun Yahya. And Harun Yahya is a fraud. And he is sentenced for 1,075 years. I mean, don't you think this is a stupid sentence? Why the guy will live for 1,000 years now? I mean, who is the donkey who gave him the sentence? Can you please, can you make it like less five years? 1,075 years in prison. Oh, you know what? If you have girlfriends like those, you might live longer. <laughs> I'm sure you will live longer. Are you kidding me? You will live like maybe 10 billion years. One thousand seventy-five years. Are they with him, by the way? That would be fun. <laughs> anyway, so this coward, he made a copyright claim. And it made me laugh, actually. 
Aman Rabbi aman. Aman Rabbi aman. Uh, anyway, did we have a good time together? Did we have a good time? As you see, we open our sky for hours and not a single Muslim there to call or to answer because they knew that their religion really is a fraud. If I am an American blonde, you know, blue eyes guy who speak not a single word in Arabic, who knows nothing about Islam, the Muslims would be lying up what if I am this guy with his name Patterson? If I am Patterson speak about Islam, how many Muslims will call? All of them, they will be lying up. Because the guy, he know nothing about Islam. And when he speak about it, he look like a fool. So they want to use him. Here they cannot use me. Here, Allah will be exposed. So I want to say thank you for being here. May the Lord bless you all. Feel free to download my videos, cut them pieces if you want. Chop them, share them, short, long, as you wish. I don't mind even if you have advertising in your channel over your videos to make some income, good for you. But don't forget please to mention where people they can come and show and watch live. As you know, I don't keep my videos anyway. I don't keep them for long, a few days. So, tell your channel, people, that if you want to see Christian Prince live, share the link so they can go and see. There's many channels they play, hundreds, maybe thousands, play my videos. Uh, I don't mind. Uh, I support all of you. But don't forget to be decent and honest and tell people that those are not yours and you are not Christian Prince. You are just a person playing my videos. Always, if you like to know where is my channel is, because we never know, we might change. Always, you can go to patreon.com slash Christian Prince, as you see in the screen. It's for free. You can click at the last video I have and you will see that this is Christian Prince channel. The last video, whatever it is. Uh, especially if I'm uh, the last video, I will go live, you know, not that, because sometimes I post like, like now I posted a video yesterday actually of Mr. Bean. Obviously, I'm not Mr. Bean, <laughs> even though Mr. Bean is smarter than Muhammad. So, always you can find my channel in Patreon, you can check it out, and you can ask people there, sign and join. And we say thank you for being here. May the Lord bless you. And remember one thing, the Lord, he says, read the books, search the books, and you will find the truth, and the truth will set you free. So with the Messiah, with the Christ, you will be set free. With Muhammad, you will be slave of Allah. With the Christ, you will be child of God. With Muhammad, you are a slave of Allah. We are not looking for slavery. Slavery is sick. We don't want to be slaves. And God did not create us to be because he needed slaves. Our God, the Almighty, he did not need our service, neither our slavery. For God, he loved the world. He sent his only begotten son. So our God, he loved us. Their God, he hate them. The Quran says, Allah created mankind and jinn, which means genie, which is a stupid to believe in. For one reason, just to worship him. And then you ask yourself, what kind of a selfish, sick God Muhammad is trying to provide to us? He created you according to him, which is false claim. For no reason 
except he needs slaves. In Islam, God, he need you as a worshiper. In Christianity, God, you need him. You need his love, for he loves you. So, in Christianity, God, he shower you with his love. He consider you as a child of him. In Islam, you are just a tool. You have one purpose, is to worship. In Christianity, Jesus, he come to us in the earth. He did not ask people to bow down, yet they did. He did not ask people to give money, he never took. He did not even own a horse. He was humble. He was down to earth, literally. He washed the feet of his disciples, yet they worship him. So with God, you are a different person. God washing your feet. In Islam, you are nobody. You are not even a mosquito. With the Christ, you are very priceless creature for God. That's why he said, when one life is saved, a happiness in his kingdom will be. Happiness. God is so happy, for he loves you. The God of Islam is Satan. From their fruit you shall know them. The promise of Allah is satanic, is lost. Sex, power, money, gold, silver. Go check the Quran. What is the heaven of Jesus? It's different level of happiness. Have nothing to do with gold and silver. Have nothing to do with the greed of the man. Have nothing to do with fancy clothing. You will be the same as angels, free of your needs, in the kingdom of your Father. So when the Lord, he says, those who you are tired, come to me. Come to me and rest. The Lord himself is providing you rest. The God of Islam, he provides you nothing except to worship the devil who tempt you with your sexual desire, with your money desire, with your power. Conquer! Let us attack the Romans so we can get the blonde girls, Muhammad said. What a reason to attack the Roman for. We want to get the blonde girls. Satan speak as Satan and God speak as God. And Muhammad is nothing but satanic mouth. And when the Quran confess that Muhammad received satanic verses and Allah will take it away, isn't it this is a proof that this is Allah, Satan speaking? Because if Satan can put satanic verses first time, he can put it always. If Satan was able to put shaitan, or shaitan was able to put his words in the book, and this is the Quran witnessing for that, how we can trust this book anymore? And then we read and we read and we read and we see how filthy, how disgusting how disgraced for mankind. Shaitan he throw in the mouth of Muhammad satanic verses. Muhammad he worshiped Shaitan. He bowed down to Shaitan. And then Muhammad, when people start laughing at him, who he claimed to be monotheist, yet he is worshiping pagan gods, he claimed that this was an act of Shaitan, controlling his thought and his mouth. How you can trust such a man? And then Allah will make what shaitan he throw in Muhammad's mouth, a trial. Can you believe it? 
even shaitan is an act of Allah. So Allah, he sent shaitan to throw satanic verses in the mouth of Muhammad. So people will be confused. And that is a trial. How stupid is that? As the Lord, he said, he cast demon, Muhammad controlled by demons. Shaitan control his mouth, control his heart. Satan, he have no power over Jesus. When the demon, they saw Jesus, they said to him, what do you want from us, son of God? When Shaitan, he see Muhammad, he speak using his mouth. And the Quran witnessing for that. Chapter 22, verse 52. So listen carefully. There's only one Savior. His name is Christ the Messiah. His name is holy. His act is holy. His life is holy. And he is the holy God. Holy he speak. Holy he do. Holy he live. Holy is coming back. From his fruit, you shall know him. Thank you. God bless you. And see you soon again. Take care.